Hello and welcome to this short presentation on extinction and the reasons that animals and plants become extinct. First of all, a definition of extinction. It's the permanent loss of all members of the same species. So the species is totally wiped out. Obviously, once that's happened, it's impossible for it to come back. Well, currently anyway, it can't happen. So the species is gone forever. It's become extinct and it's a permanent condition. By way of illustration, here are three animals which have all become extinct relatively recently. You can tell that it's relatively recently because these are genuine photographs of them. Even the dodo was never photographed, there were paintings of them, and you can find stuffed examples in museums, but it was never photographed. This is the Tasmanian tiger, now completely extinct. The carrier pigeon, here, and this is a freshwater dolphin, which has now been completely wiped out. They've all got their own individual stories about why they became wiped out. It usually involves humans, not always, but frequently does. Recent extinctions seem to be inextricably linked with human activity, um, which is the case with all of these. But there are other reasons why animals become extinct, other than the way that humans treat them or treat their habitat. I just want to start by looking at three examples of biological reasons why animals or plants actually become extinct. So the first one, predators. The animal that you're looking at here is called the brown tree snake and it's a, a native of Australia. It feeds on birds in the trees. It doesn't have a huge amount of success because birds can easily escape from trees. But it was accidentally introduced to an island called Guam G-U-A-M. I'm going to put it on there for you. There you go. Um, after the Second World War, not that you particularly need to know the name of the place, but it's, it's an island, is Guam. It's a very isolated island, and because of that, the birds that live there have lost the power of flight. They, they don't fly anymore. They, they're ground-dwelling. And it's got a really, or has had, a very rich population community of birds but since the tree snakes arrived there they found the birds easy picking they just crawl along the ground and eat them and it's having a terrible effect on the population there of birds so it's an example of one species being introduced into another and becoming a nuisance predator and there are many of them littered across history another reason biological reason why um, species become extinct other than predators is disease this little fellow here is called a Tasmanian devil. They, he's a baby one. They grow up to be wolf-like creatures. Um, they're only found in Tasmania, a tiny island, well, an island off the, the coast of Australia. But there's a contagious form of cancer that spreads purely from one Tasmanian devil to another. And the population of these is very, very limited now, as this virus that's carrying the cancer spreads from one to the other. So it's a new virus that's evolved, and throughout evolution, whenever a new virus appears, um, it stands a chance of, of causing significant damage, and that's what's been happening with the Tasmanian devil there. So predators, diseases, and finally, competition. Um, there are lots of examples of competition here. The most famous one in Britain, I guess, is with the red squirrels and the grey squirrels. The red squirrel here is the natural squirrel found in the UK. At some stage in our history, the grey squirrels, so the red one, is natural to the UK. At some part of our history, the grey ones were brought over for... Um, someone's garden, someone, someone had a big garden in a stately home. Of course they escaped, they're far more gregarious than the red ones, they eat more, they have stronger survival skills and they eat a wider diversity of food and so they've pushed the red ones back um, to the brink of extinction actually, although there is some, some evidence that they're starting to make a bit of a comeback. And the similar thing happened in Australia when rabbits were taken over to Australia you know, Australia only had marsupials living there previously, animals that give birth to young through pouches, um, and marsupials don't produce that many babies. Things like kangaroos and wallabies don't produce great numbers of babies. Rabbits do. Rabbits were introduced by accident to Australia for food. They're now spreading across Australia, um, feeding on the various um, undergrowth plants there and pushing many native or endemic Australian species to the brink of extinction. But it's not just biological factors that can cause extinction. There are some environmental ones too. The two key ones are firstly climate. 
The Earth's climate changes. It seems to go in a cycle. And we know that Britain was under a huge layer of snow in not too long ago in terms of the, the history of the Earth. And of course, when you've got that depth of snow, it's going to wipe out species that are only found in Britain. And the same thing happens the world over. When climate changes, it threatens species. It can clear areas, send them extinct in some areas. So climate change is, an, is a certain aspect of extinction. Climate change is never very quick. It takes place over quite a long phase of time. And so it doesn't cause an instant extinction, but it is a reason why some species have been wiped out from some parts of the world. But there can be more rapid changes as well. A volcanic eruption can send magma tumbling in, in, down the slope, covering a whole area, and it can cause ash to cause a lot of damage as well. And an asteroid hitting the Earth would have the same effect. And this can bring about a really rapid change over a very, very large section of the Earth. And during the course of the history of the Earth, it's thought that there have been five phases when there have been things called mass extinctions. Now, these are tens of millions of years apart, um, the first one is thought to have been about 440 million years ago. Then after another 40, years, 40 million years, there was another one. And then after about another 100 years, another one, and so on. So every 100 or so million years, there is a mass extinction where about 50% of all of the species on Earth are wiped out. The most recent of these saw the loss of the dinosaurs. Now, the dinosaurs appear to have gone extinct about 65 million years ago, which was the last mass extinction. And speculation has been rife for a long time about what it was that caused the dinosaurs to become extinct. And in 2010, a, an international working party was set up to review all of the evidence that had been gathered over the previous 25, 30 years and to analyse it and to try and figure out what it actually was that caused the dinosaurs to become extinct. And this massive working party arrived at the conclusion that an asteroid had crashed into the Earth um, in this place here. Now, I think that's pronounced the Chicxulub Crater. And you can see there that it's found in the Gulf of Mexico. The USA is here. You've got Mexico around there. And there's a peninsula here. Uh, and there is a lot of evidence, if you look at satellite pictures, that there is an enormous crater in this landmass here where it just goes into the sea. Let me show you on this slide here. I'll just shrink that for a second. You can see on this slide um, a simulation of what it would look like with a large asteroid crashing into the Chicxulub Peninsula. You can see here the shock waves going out, and that would have happened just here. And in fact, when you look at um, the images from space, you can see an area that, that could have been caused by such an asteroid. And when you measure the depth of certain kinds of, of elements and, um, you know, substrate types, mud types, that are found here, and you look around the world at whereabouts they're found, you can find these concentric rings going out where there's a high concentration here, and as you move out across the world, there's less of them. And you can see this picture here. That's where the Chicxulub crater would be. And you can see that it's spread right across the world. Britain's there. You've got Africa here, Australia just down there. So there's evidence that if an asteroid did hit the Earth at that point with sufficient force, then it would be enough to shield the sunlight for a very long time and also um, to coat large portions of the Earth with dust that may have been radioactive or anything. Speculation, again, is rife as to what could have done it. But the majority of the evidence seems to point to a mass extinction of dinosaurs being caused by some catastrophic incident from space causing this dust to spread around the Earth, possibly lowering the temperatures, plants dying, the, the dinosaurs' food dying. No one's quite sure, but that is the, the main consensus. But then, within a few weeks of that study being published back in 2010, a group of British scientists came up with another theory, and they said that um, there'd been evidence of a lot of water melting they put it down to a kind of global warming resulting in the polar ice caps melting which would lower the temperature of the earth overall as, the, as all of the ice got deposited in the sea. 
the temperature of the Earth might have fallen by as much as 9 degrees Celsius, and that, they say, it could have been the cause of the mass extinction. So the, the real crux of the matter is nobody knows, and in an exam they would never say what caused the dinosaurs to become extinct. They might ask for a theory of it, or for you to evaluate two different theories, but that would be it. And that's the end of this here presentation indeed for watching. I told you it would be a short one. Um, I suggest you go over it again and just check your notes. But that is the end of this presentation on extinction. Thank you very much indeed for watching, and I'll see you again very soon. Ta-da.